uh, King of New York, did you know it would become a kind of a cult classic, like the way it became, um, kind of after, <laughs> well, Bad Lieutenant, King of New York. Uh, no, the King of New York, at what point did I know it was going to be a cult classic? Yeah. You know, the, 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 the life of it, when you finish, you know, you let go of the movie, and then it's out there. Right. I know you'll give me what I need. I know you will not refuse me. I need courage. I know you will provide. I know you shed tears. I know you continue to shed tears every day because of man's ingratitude. You choose souls. And despite my unworthiness, you've chosen me. So what's up, bro? What's going on, Abel? Abel Ferrara, uh, director of Padre Pio, which premiered at the Mammoth Film Festival, world premiere, North American premiere in that case, right? Yeah, First time. So. Yeah. Montreal Hotel, 1922 something, Sunset Boulevard. Baby. Really nice Hollywood. place. Hollywood. We're not. West LA. Even better. Um, West Hollywood. Abel, this is an interesting film. Uh, I didn't even know, I, I spoke to one of your producers, uh, Kyle Stroud, uh, at the festival. <laughs> I didn't know the story was in, was it, no one picked it up by now. It's such a fascinating story. Uh, you would think there'd be a movie made about it. Big one. Yeah, Padre Pio. Yeah, Padre Pio. Well, there have been a lot of TV movies in Italy. Uh-huh. So it's like, they always take when he's in, you know, older. He's like, uh, you know, all the images of him, all the, uh, you know, his persona is that of an old man. You know, our film was about him as a young man. He eventually became a saint. Yeah. And then after he died, you know, the Vatican would battle with him. He had a very well to get on again relationship. How come? Because there's a lot of that tumultuous relationship with the Vatican and whatnot. What contributed to that? You know, when someone is, is performing miracles or is perceived to be performing miracles and he's doing this you know the vatican is in rome at this time he was like the equivalent of yuma arizona to washington dc understand he's in the badlands uh -huh. top of the mountain all the way all the way east julia san Giovanni Tungo, it's on top of the mountain it was basically, you know, stationed there, or sent there, because, you know, they were always kind of afraid of him since he was a young kid. He was at Visions, you know, was an exceptional person. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a, when somebody becomes so charismatic and so you know, has so much, is a star mm -hmm. you know, I mean. Well, not everyone, can, not, Judah thinks that he was capable of. No, well, you know, I mean, very few people had the reputation he had, yeah. okay? And once he gets that reputation, then comes the, um, the jealousy, a lot of things. But it went from Pope to Pope, you know, some people were, on his side, I mean, he stood in, others didn't, but he kept a low key, you know, he was low key about the whole thing, you know. As a monk, as, as, as a cappuccino, he was in service. You know, yeah. The Pope is his boss, and he was like two ways about it. So he's like rebelling in this thing. Yeah. He's just doing his thing, and then but he's always going to, you know, bow down to, to you know, the, right. Uh, what was the relationship that he had with, with the locals and the people? Did they obviously made an impression they do it. They do it. You know, he came from another place. He was young, he was tall, he was good looking, he was, you know, the servant of the mass. He's, he's, he's the moment of truth, and no one could do it like him. Yeah. He had that ability. And he just, and he was, you know, it's his compassion and his love for people. And he just, he felt it. I mean, this is really what he was about. The only great confessor. You know, at that point, the priest was 
your psychiatrist, your doctor, your go to for everything. Yeah. You know? And um and he he had the ability to, to listen and to care. You know. And the end game with him is the the, the money they were, they were making doing these miracles. He built the hospital. Mm-hmm. Okay. When he arrived in this town in 1918, 1919, it was a, it was a running war. I mean, it was like a pandemic back then. It was the Spanish flu. Yeah. World War One had just ended. It was this was one of the most violent, poorest places in the world. And Sean McComb too, even from the tra- clips and trailers, I see there's a lot of unrest and fighting going on too. Well, you know that too. When it happened, we, you know, we focused the film on an event that. Uh, because, you know, the, what I was saying was, in the end game, he built the hospital. Yeah. He built a $35 million hospital. Wow. And brought modern medicine to the whole area. So, you know, for me, that's his big move. Um, yeah, the moment of, we take the film is the end of World War II of World War I. Mm-hmm. The soldiers come back. Italy, which is a very new country, you know, I mean, Italy's only like 150 years old. Mm-hmm. This was their first... United, this was the first free election, okay, in the town. The soldiers come back after a brutal war, they're not happy. The, you know, the feudal system is gone. There's an election, the left, the communist won the election. Mm-hmm. The right wing, the landowners, the church, okay, yeah. you know, the Vatican side of the church, and, you know, they're concerned with element the soldiers that they probably bought yeah. didn't buy the election and for the first time it was a shooting it was a massacre mm-hmm. 13 people wow. a couple of cops and, and the rest were just farmers and women and whatever over the, the uh, you know the you know, same deal that happened in uh, January 6th you know what I mean elections are great until you lose Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Shia, getting him on board. We, we know I'm sort of a method actor guy that, that delves really deep into his roles. Um, was he on your mind going into this process, knowing the commitment that he likes to make to his roles? Yeah, or? I met him, you know, I met him specifically for the, for the party. It was something he suggested mm-hmm. to it, and I got, you know, I got to know him personally, you know, through Zoom, you know, naturally. Yeah. And, um, you know, he's dedicated to the process, he's dedicated to the films. You know, I mean, he has this, you know, he has that awesome talent that he has, but he, you know, that's uh, backed up by a very serious you know, commitment to, to the work and to, you know, he has the gift of understanding what he needs to do to, you know, to, to deliver. You know, a performance that's going to embody the character's playing, which is fine. At the same time, he's going through kind of the same journey that he always went through. In what way did Chai go there? You know, there's a lot of questioning of where he was at, the question of you know, where he was going. He had a, a religious conversion before, the right? You know, and this kind of just added, you know, brought it more to him. You know, is is. Yeah, as he delved into really what you know, the policy is. Mm-hmm. Do you think with a different actor potentially this film could have been different? If, if not for no, his I'm dedication and performance? I mean, but in that way, making uh, you know, Peel come alive. I mean, I don't That's think that. So, I mean, you know, if we with a different actor, it would a different film, I don't know. You know yeah. I mean, but we had the right actor. Uh, yeah, there was no accident. He came. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. him and I came together at the moment of this film. It's, like, it's a miracle. It's, uh, mm. Where'd you find guys from the uh, locations? It's uh, yeah, right where it happened. Really? We went to Puglia. It's Puglia is like, a, like I'm saying, it's east side of Italy, mm-hmm. kind of like the Achilles heel of the people that are up on the map. It's an incredible place to shoot because it's very. You know, a lot of it is just the way it was. We used a lot of people from there, you know. Locals, a lot of locals. Yeah. Right there. And, you know, it's like you're on a mountain, but you're overlooking the Adriatic wow. Sea. So it's kind of like, that's a nice spot. Yeah, yeah. 
looking back at, at now that the production is kind of complete, um, was this a challenging shoot for you? Uh, what are your kind of takeaways from from the process of making this film? Yeah, I learned a lot. Yeah, I learned a lot. I mean, they're all challenges, but you know, in just a different way. Yeah, it's I don't, you know, there are you know, what do you mean? You know, what do you say? You know, challenges, no problems, just opportunities. You know, we lot. wanted to shoot this film for a while. You know, a lot of research and energy into it. We had to bring people together, the people from you know. Brothers, months yeah. in LA helping Shia there, helping us all. There was a movie too. You know, it was. Um, you know, film filmmaker for me is just. You know, it's a miracle. You know, yeah. it's a miracle. I'm still alive doing it, and it's a miracle. I do. It's, it's like it's so good. So Has your perspective changed since, since the early days of you making films to now? I mean, you know, the whole industry's changed. <laughs> the world's changed. You know, yeah, I mean, everything's every so every day, bro. digital. Every day, yeah. every day. Does this film kind of, when people see it, will it remind them of some of the other kind of style have you done? Because you always kind of like the gritty, sort of dark, you know, obviously focus on the streets of New York sort of things, of the liveliness of it. But will that have some elements of your previous work in it too? Um, I hope it does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, you know, we're not changing that much. I mean, you yeah. know, we're growing. Anything you want to do kind of going forward that you haven't done in, in, in your career, like filmmaking wise, uh, want to tackle a certain theme maybe or uh, genre or something that you haven't maybe accomplished that you'd like to? You know, we're like kind of slaves to our, our you know, our imaginations. You know uh -huh. what I mean? So, yeah. I'm not like thinking about any of that. You know, like the film just comes. You know, when it does, you know, you follow it. You know? Yeah. You know, you see, each film, you know, each film is like so different and separate. And every, you know, so there's no, there's no going back to any style. There's yeah. no you know, crafting something. Or you gotta get out there. It's, it's a moment for moment practical experience making a film. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, they, they, that film embodies those months that that film was, you know, in that time shot period of life. Did, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. You know, I was always interested in your career because you've worked with so many of the similar actors, you know, Harvey Keitel, Willem Dafoe. You just have a, obviously, a Christopher. Uh, there's, there's always that element of, of working with people that you can trust for a director. What is it like for you? You've worked with actors that you seem that they're, they're connected to you uh, throughout your career. Has this been always kind of your style and way of working with people that you might have a shorthand with or just a personal connection with? I mean, I mean something attracts you to somebody, you know, mm -hmm. when you make the choice, who's going to play the part. You know, it's like, I didn't know Shia before we started this film. I didn't know Harvey before we did Battle Time. Wow. So it's like, you know, in this business, you gotta, you know, get tight quick. You know. But, um, you know, an actor, like, an actress too. You know, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, Beatrice Dahl and Ozzy Ortiz, Julia Pinoch. When the movies really too slow, it's just like, um, you know, this this place, uh, the actor is not gonna is not gonna shoot with us. And I do it for them. Right. And yeah. They yeah. do it because they 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 feel you know, they feel something in um you know material. They feel something in me. They feel something in my group. You know? Yeah. And they, and they, they know the movies, you know, yeah. they're not stupid, they make sure they know, you know, they're not jumping into the movie. They're complete unknown, and it's always unknown enough, you know, scary enough that they you know. At least have an idea. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I'm curious, before we kind of wrap things up, uh, King of New York, did you know it would become a kind of a cult classic, like the way it became? Um, 
Well, Bad Lieutenant, King of New York. No, uh, the King of New York, at what point did I know it was going to be a cult classic? Yeah. You know, the, 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 the life of it, when you finish, you know, you let go of the movie, and then it's out there. Right. You know, now, especially now today, we talk about the digital. Right. I mean, how films are, are watched, how films are taken. But, you know, the film is an entity in itself. So King Eric is there, outside of me, outside of anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, outside of the way it's promoted, outside of where it's placed. And, you know, people... But that film it was not in a movie theater. A movie theater, I mean, there's a million reasons why, okay? But when it was the first kind of videos when they would be selling videos and a lot of us uh -huh. and yeah. So it was after like the, the video, yeah, the VHS light, mm -hmm. okay? Which, you know, when I first started this business, there was no such thing as a VHS light. Yeah. You know, you live and die in the theater for over and you'd be on TV. Mm -hmm. Everything changes, you know. You know yeah, now it's on our cell phones we watch. It's streaming. As long as you watch it. Yeah. <laughs> That's my attitude. Finally, I'm curious about you, aside from a filmmaker, you and in your real life, what are some of your interests and hobbies? Because I always feel like your real life living inspires the work that you do. You know, what are some things you're drawn to in life? and, and it's my just life by life? Yeah, what are you attracted to and interest in it? I don't know, man. I'm a filmmaker. I got a yeah. family. I got a lady guitar. You know, okay. I mean, I'm not like a normal guy. Yeah. Are you uh, still living in New York? or? No, I live in Rome for the last few years. Wow. So you, what was that? What about Rome that made you want to move there kind of full time? It was what about New York that made you want to leave? Yeah. We don't got enough time. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's your city in a sense, you know, you came up there. Well, but, you know. It was the Indian city too. Yeah. Change. Well, <laughs> man, things change about a month now these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About a second. There you go. Abel, uh, right. it's been a pleasure, my friend. Thank you.